We're here for the uh, debrief for practice number two, April 6th, for the Tier 3 group. Kind of the second time in the boat for most of you. Uh, lots of things went very well. Uh, rigging improved. Good job on that. Um, let's see. We got more wind than expected. And so uh, going out in the big bay... Because of the Sabbaths and the FJs in La Playa, you guys did a good job of responding to that. Definitely got more wind than we expected. Both upwind and downwind went very well. So upwind improved, downwind improved for sure. And uh, definitely you guys learned downwind, the up in the lulls, down in the puffs. And I don't even know if you guys knew you were doing it, but most of you guys had a pretty natural feel for that. You increase the wind in light air and pressure on the spinnaker sheet by going up in the light spots. And uh, we were in kind of middle soaking or just on the edge of trapping and soaking conditions. Uh, and then we had, uh, in down in the puffs decreases the wind. You guys did pretty good on that. And then in hindsight, we would have depowered. So in hindsight there, we would have depowered a couple of the teams. So there's a lot going on. And um, as soon as a team capsizes more than twice, so two plus capsizes, we should have had you guys immediately going with board up, dagger board up, four to six inches. So once you capsize more than once, because uh, the first time might be a fluke, board up four to six inches. More jib halyard, okay? And if possible, also going to the middle hole at this point. Middle hole, if that's not gonna make as big a difference. These two here are not gonna make as big a difference as that, but middle hole on the clue for the jib sheet. Um, more Cunningham. Okay, so in hindsight, we would have had you guys, just a couple teams that were flipping, and it was kind of a breezy day for second day out, uh, as you can see from the video. Uh, more Cunningham, um, middle hole, and uh, I'll have another comment on that uh, further down here. But anyway, we should have been depowering. Okay, so depowering is signaled to you by a few things. Depowering starts when the crew is quite low on the trapeze and really feeling the pressure uh, on them because the boat's going quite fast and then the skipper is hiking a lot. Once we get beyond that point, we need to start depowering. But also, capsize mode is when you start to depower. Okay, very good. So what we did is we did an on-land drill and we talked about popping the battens. And popping the battens will not be... Uh, a big problem for you as the crews improve on their balance and kind of knowing what they're doing. But we talked about popping battens and making sure the boat uh, comes through the wind the right amount and then the crew is got just the right timing on when to flatten the boat and pop the battens. And we worked a little bit on how you use kind of a downward hip thrust thing to uh, to, to help with that just at the right time. The most important thing we talked about uh, out on, uh, on the on land drill was about main and jib trim. Okay, these are the things that are going to make the biggest difference in the skiff. And we talked a lot about it. And we talked about what we called in the ballpark. Okay, in the ballpark meant getting the leech of the jib relatively close to the spreader tip as your starting point. So you have to be able to see that. Um, we talked about the mainsail, getting the leech of the mainsail, the upper leech in the ballpark, and not too much twist, and not too much uh, batten hook. So we talked about getting those kind of in a ballpark setting, and that's something you have to do religiously in these boats. You need to make sure that you're not going out there. Usually people live, leave the jibs too loose and therefore they lose power. When you leave the jib too loose, the top of the jib luffs and the bottom does not. 
very thin, tall jib does not respond well to big eases when it's, uh, you know, normal conditions, which for you guys, maybe it wasn't normal at this practice. It was a little windy for you, but in those conditions, uh, a lot of skilled teams would have not been twisting off their jib a ton. And then the mainsail trim uh, has been consistently, when I watch fleets, the mainsail leech tension is all over the place. Does not matter what group I work with. So we talked about not having too much twist uh, in those conditions where we need power. Um, so again, we talked about main and jib trim. We talked about uh, the kite set in Dow. So putting the spinnaker up and down on land and about how to trim the kite <clears throat> a little bit, how to make sure that as we were going out on the trapeze or right after jibes that were not over trimmed. Okay, then we talked about safety and um, we talked about no turtling. We talked about if we get separated. Okay, we talked about if, the, if our group gets separated, what we would do is we would do slow speed maneuvering near each other. So if the group gets separated, slow speed maneuvering, and coming back towards us, not go off and sail way off in the distance. <clears throat> okay, then after that, we went on the water and you guys did the slow speed maneuvering. Okay, so you did, you stayed in the dinghy basin, slow speed maneuvering in the dinghy basin until everybody was launched. Uh, and we're going to do that every practice. You might not understand why we're doing the slow speed maneuvering practice. The reason is, is for balance and getting our teamwork down, getting our calm, steady, understanding how to make the boat turn with the sails balance. So every practice we do that. And then we sailed out to the big bay together and then we, um, we did uh, random starts at the buoys and we sailed upwind and downwind and we let you work it out. Um, and everybody did quite well. Everybody had their moments where they really got it locked in one way or the other. I think um, generally right now, too much heel. You'll see from the video that I put on the WhatsApp there, you'll see too much heel. That is normal for new teams. But what we don't want you to get in a habit of, so the name of the game is flat, okay? So the name of the game is flat. We don't want you to get in the habit of flattening out your boat and pulling the main in when it gets flat. That's what people were doing. The boat would, all of us would, would it would get flat and then the crew who's afraid to get dunked would yank the main sheet in and the boat would heel back over. Now this is all quite normal. Um, but remember, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to, to sail the boat essentially flat because once we dig the lured stern of the boat in, the, the, the boat, it, it creates substantially more drag. I'm not saying we sail perfectly flat all the time because in gusty conditions, if you heel to windward or you put your crew in the water, you have to prepare against that. But still, uh, you're going to see from the video, there's quite a bit of tipping over. It doesn't bug me at all right now. Okay, so uh, goal for the next class. Goals for the next class. I have a suspicion that it's going to be breezy, uh, breezier than when we have. And if it is breezier, we are going to depower. So if it's if it is breezier, um, we are likely going to go one pin or half a pin, but one pin down. Um, we're going to sail with the board up right from the get-go, four to six inches right away. So if it is breezy, you're a little worried about flipping. These are the things we're going to do to prevent it. The board up is a situation where you create less lift. So you will flip less because the daggerboard won't be like an airplane wing. When you get going fast, you pull off a jibe, the boat heels one way or the other, the, the dagger board wants to take off like an airplane wing. So higher board is going to 
uh, reduced lift, it's gonna make the boat slippy, okay? Slippy as opposed to trippy. Okay, trippy, I know my handwriting here is weak. Trippy. Slippy means when you come out of jibes, when you come out of tacks, the boat is gonna slip a little more, especially jibes. Trippy is when the board is all the way down, the boat will trip over the board as it loads up. So that's what we're looking for here, okay? And then we talked earlier about what we were gonna do. You wanna go more jib halyard, Put your jib sheet on the middle hole on the clue board. You gotta remember all this. If it's gonna be windy, you gotta remember all this. Um, and uh, be really good on the vang, okay? So on a, on a breezier day, if we do get a breezier day Tuesday, we gotta make sure we get the vang on right after we head upwind and we need to ease it two or three inches from where that is, four inches maybe, not all the way off because you can really unstabilize the boat with the vang all the way off, but you gotta be good on the vang. You gotta have it on upwind. <clears throat> okay, then we're gonna work on more on that up in the lulls, down in the puffs. So um, let's see here. If the wind is here and we're going downwind, if we go this way, we increase the apparent wind and if we go that way, we decrease the wind. So we slowly go up in light spots. And when we get big puffs, we jab the boat down. If you just, if you just pull the rudder and hold it over like that, you're going to stall the rudder. You're going to get stall on the rudder there. And the boat's not going to go down. You have to do, as you get the puffs and you get ripping, you want to sail with a lot of power, you jab the rudder like that a, few, a little bit, just to get the boat to start going down. Then you can do what you want. But if you wait too long and you just hold the rudder over like this, you're gonna create a stall and the boat is actually gonna head up. And then what happens when the boat heads up? The wind increases. A couple of you guys capsized this last weekend because you let uh, this last week because you let the boat head up as it was healing. Remember, anytime you head up, the wind's gonna increase. So you can't let it head up. Okay, so we're going to work on up in the lulls, down in the puffs. Uh, and then we're going to work on jibing specifics. We're going to look, we're going to talk about uh, how to keep the boat flat going into the jibe. If you start a windy jibe and you heel over like this as you start the jibe, the boat is going to slow down and that's going to increase the apparent wind. So you're already going to have a higher chance of flipping because... As you slow down into the jibe, you increase the wind, and then as the boom swings across, it swings harder. The goal is to keep the boat flat and the boat going fast through the jibe. So we're gonna talk about how to keep the boat flat going into it. We're gonna talk about how to steer and main in, or main across, but main in. If your boom swings from here and it swings like this that much, 70, 80 degrees, it's going to cause the boat to flip or get more out of control. As we get to dead down wind on the jibe, the main has to be coming in and your hand is actually on the top of the boom. So you have the main sheet in your forward hand and your hand is on the top of the boom, guiding it across. So we're gonna talk about that. And um, we're gonna talk about wire to wire and not over trimming the sheet as we do it. So not over trimming the spinnaker sheet and being able to trim the kite properly as we're switching sides, going wire to wire. We're gonna talk about that and show you those tricks. So very good. So very good, everybody. We've got a class on Tuesday. Write down anything that you're having trouble with right now. So put it in your head to just write down your notes. You don't wanna ask me them on Tuesday, okay? You wanna send them to me by Monday by Monday night, buenorogers at gmail.com. And uh, send me your notes. What are you struggling with? What are you thinking uh, about what you wanna learn on Tuesday? Send it to me, any ideas you have, but don't bring them to with you on Tuesday because I won't have time to answer them. Great job, everybody. Look forward to seeing you.